Hello, this is a uh, tutorial on how to use the Equalizer APO and Peace User Interface. To give a little context for this, um, my SIM rig has uh, a number of transducers on it. Uh, they uh, give me a lot of tactile information so I can feel things. This can be done in an airplane. Uh, this is uh, some shakers for aviators. Uh, it's actually an old screenshot. Um, I'm still getting ready to set up all my stuff for DCS, but this is per plane, and uh, there's a lot of configuration things in here. Uh, DCS isn't supported nearly as well inside of some of the other packages uh, that I use for sim racing. Um, so I'm using a number of different types of transducers. You can see uh, this is a Clark Synthesis 329. On the back was a Butt Kicker Concert. Uh, there's a TST 429. These are the auras I used to have under my foot plate. But the bottom line is these things all transfer vibrations into uh, the experience you're having when you're in the SIM rig. So, um, SIM Hub, as I mentioned earlier, and I'll leave a link to this is really good for uh, configuring the feelings that you get when you're in sim racing. Um, there's also sim vibe, which is uh, the, the sim hub is free or, and you can donate to support the effort And this uh, is $89. Um, and uh, these are also, uh, I, I believe you can get part of this free, but then you have to pay for the rest. And I still need to get my, uh, stuff configured better. So anyway, um, for the Equalizer APO, you go to SoundForge, and I'll include the links uh, below. Um, you download this. It's, uh, it's open source, so there's no cost. The PC Equalizer is a user interface for the Equalizer APO, which has a text interface. Um, okay, so the first thing that you're going to see is once everything is installed, or when, well, let's put it this way. When you first install the Equalizer APO, it'll ask you to specify which devices you want to control. The Equalizer APO gets into Windows between between the sound that's being sent to a video or an audio card and the audio card. So it catches the um, the signal in transit, does a little math on it to apply whatever filters, and then passes it on its merry way. So there's no um, it's not in any way, shape, or form linked to whatever audio card you work. As long as the audio card you have is recognized by Windows, it'll work. So in this case, I've got two uh, devices selected. All right. And uh, so once you double click on piece, come on, here we go. And uh, I'm going to use the full interface for this demonstration. All right. So you've got. A graphic equalizer graph to let you see what your signal is going to look like, and then you've got an equalizer. And underneath the equalizer, there are different types of filters. Um, I'm primarily going to use peak filters, low pass, and high pass filters, but there's a whole lot of others that are in here. So for um, for working on this, and you've also got a, a preamp um, at the top where you could increase or decrease the signal. Um, so you can actually see it here now. At any rate, um, I'm going to just zero this out for now. Now, if you look at what's in here, um, I've got left, right, center, and subwoofer. These are four channels so far configured. All eight are available inside of the uh, in, inside of the uh, uh, control. The way that works internally is that you've got um, your one through eight channels. This is assuming you've got a 7.1 card. Inside of the, uh, the text config files, you can use either the numbers or the letters here. The uh, right side here shows how it looks inside of the, the piece uh, user interface. So what I've got right here is set up on speakers, high definition audio. That's the device I've got. I have configurations for uh, four different things. Now, <clears throat> the way this works, 
Um, you can gang them together, um, rename them, uh, copy between channels. So if I decided I wanted to use a fifth channel and I liked this graph, I can just click this little speaker arrow to select what I want to paste somewhere else and just say, okay, I'm going to stick it down here in the right rear and then apply it there. And it's very easy to, to do that. Um, what happens when you save this is it creates a, a text file. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Save button, and I'll just say uh, Video. Yeah, so that's fine. All right, so even though it's got a piece file using that name, it actually copied everything into this piece text file. Now the piece text file, um, it may look a little bit funny, but you can put in comments and use white space to make it easier to look at. So for example, we could do something like this just to help us read the file. And I could have something here that says, um, uh, and you could put a little white space between your channels. You could label them and say, well, this is um, for a uh, butt kicker concert. And you could say, this is for a, uh, a TST 329, etc. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can move things together. Let's say um, you can see I'm using the exact same thing on these three channels. So I've got the left channel and I've got the sub and the right and they're using the identical filters. Well, you could um, just do something like this. And you can get rid of the other ones. And let's say that this is assuming that uh, those channels were all butt kicker concerts, for example. Um, you've applied it to all of those. And if this one, in this case, uh, I'm dealing with... Uh, so I might want to tweak this a little differently for, for the difference, because this uh, the 429 is more efficient and goes just a little bit lower. So I, I could tweak that potentially. But at any rate, um, this could be your configuration for one video card. And you can flush out all eight of the channels. And you can refer to them here, either by the numbers or the letters, as mentioned uh, earlier. So let's say <clears throat> I'm going to save this as, uh, as my audio card one. You can see I was playing with this earlier. Had very bad results with the uh, microphone on my webcam. <clears throat> so I pulled out my snowball mic, which sounds a little better. Anyway, so I've saved that. So let's say I change to my other audio device. So I've got the SB diff also configured. And then let's say, I don't know, I make some other changes to this and say this one's going to look a little different. And I'll explain how the equalizer works a little bit. Um, okay, that's good enough for now. So I'm going to um, save this. Okay. And then I'm going to open up the piece text file. And see it now has the device listed as the advanced audio SPDIF. So I can take my audio card one text and I can just cut and paste this into this file. And uh, I can put in some comments, you know, audio card two, and uh, do whatever I want below this. But it will read the first device at that GUID, and you can see the ending of the GUID is different. Um, and it'll apply channels as specified here, and then it'll apply channels to the second audio card, and so on if you've got more. So I can save this as, and I've already sort of done this, so audio card one and two text, for example. 
All right. Now, when a uh, piece is configured, what it looks at is the config.txt file is what Equalizer APO runs off of. But you can simply include a different text file. And I believe you could even include multiples where I could have just left them separate. But for now, all I would need to do is uh, take this and put it in here. And now when Equalizer APO um, starts up, oop, hang on here. Okay, so now when Equalizer APO starts up, it will read from this text file and it will apply the filtering as shown there. So that's all there is to it. Um, I have found that it does start to apply things uh, differently. I've, I've had I've had to reboot my computer to get changes to take effect, but I've also had other times where I was moving things around and it appeared to make changes uh, immediately. But um, once this is configured, when your system boots up, uh, Equalizer APO automatically comes in, puts these filters, and it just sits there and intercepts the signals on the way to the audio cards, applies whatever filtering you've got, and everything's done. So when it's set it and forget it once you've taken care of it. Uh, the, only, um, the only issues that could come up is apparently the way it hooks itself into the operating system. After uh, Windows updates, it's possible that you may have to reinstall it so it inserts itself back in there. You wouldn't have to reconfigure the text files. You'd just uh, reinstall the... Uh, I think you just have to run the configurator against those uh, devices and save that, and it would insert itself where it needs to be. All right, so let's look at the uh, equalizer for a few minutes. The, um, the filtering down here, there's a whole bunch to pick from. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm mostly using uh, peak filters and low pass filters and high pass filters. Um, and the idea, Let's see. So in the case of the uh, butt kicker concert, what this is doing is it's putting a little more of a boost uh, below 20 hertz, and then it's dropping off quickly so you don't hear anything above that. And what I've done is applied two um, low pass filters, and they're stacked at 40 and 60. And the numbers here that they, they called Q for quality, but it's more how wide it is. So if you have a really high number, it's effectively a notch filter. And if you've got a low number, like a one, it's flatter. So if we were to, um, let's look at this guy here for a minute. You can see how that's kind of pulling everything up. And if I made this a high number, let's say something pretty drastic like a four, you can see it makes it more of a peak. Um, I could continue on that route. And in the case of say a TST, where it has a really strong spike in one place, you could, temp you could potentially try to mute that to make others, uh, other frequencies show up faster, but uh, I haven't been doing that. Um, and what I tend to do also with the uh, low pass and high pass filters is I'll stack them. Um, so, so the first one has a one, so it's kind of flat. If I have a really sharp um, initial point for a, for a filter like that, you'll end up with this uh, nonlinearity. It'll have a big bump. So what I do is I, uh, I use a one and then a two, and then I end up with a nice drop off. So it's getting rid of all the frequencies above that range. And this goes down to 30 decibels. So for all practical purposes, you're not going to notice it or hear it at that point. Um, and these frequencies at the top can be adjusted however you want it. And then let's say that this was too much. You know, you're hitting your transducer too hard. You could, uh, you could tweak it up here and get it down to a baseline that you're happy with. Um, so the preamplification will adjust the audio signal 
uh, and you might want to compensate for that depending on the curve you've got or you might want a little bit of a bump here um, this is the happy spot for this transducer or approximately that it's uh, you, you might even want to tweak things to get different effects but uh, as I've found out it's a lot easier to work within the uh, area the transducers are happiest running in and uh, in, in particular um, if you let your you know butt kicker LFE or concert do what it wants to do when it's real low and it, it pretty much dies off right in around you know 35 40 Hertz and uh, you know, let the uh, the TSTs do what they do best. The combination is fantastic. So, at any rate, this is uh, that's basically what I've got for this. So, you know, it's it's free. You download it. Once you set it, you can leave it. You can uh, optimize for your additional your specific transducers, and then you can uh, share the same filtering among all the channels uh, using the same type of transducers. And you could do that across different audio cards so uh, you know I've got this being shared up here and uh, I could say well I want to put it down here too and replace this and uh, now it's it's on RR and sub on this channel as well and I could get rid of that and you know so forth so it's um, it's pretty straightforward as long as you don't worry about, you know, the fact this is a peak filter and it's a low pass filter and that's a high pass filter, it, it doesn't matter if this looks like gobbledygook. As long as your graph looks like what you're trying to send to your transducer, you've got the right frequency range outlined, um, everything should work fine. Anyway, good luck. I hope this helps somebody. Thanks.